All right, everybody, welcome to uh, Mega Powers Podcast. Uh, this is the first one we're doing with students in the room. Uh, we're trying to have conversation with students about school, about issues, about life, about whatever is going on. And the topic of our first conversation today is Mega Powers, um, which first question really is, uh, how'd you come to be a part of Mega Powers? And maybe we should first establish what Mega Powers kind of is. So anybody want to tell us your story about finding out about Mega Powers and how you came to be a part of Mega Powers and understood it? Uh, well, Mega Powers is just like a big group of students in a single ELT and it's based upon like starting a community and like spreading positivity throughout the school. And my personal way that I got invited into the Mega Powers ELT was I was got given a secret paper last year and there was a QR code and uh, the three teachers of the ELT picked certain students on who they wanted to join and who they didn't. But yeah, that's how I got in. I think, well, the same thing happened to me. I was in my AP Lang class and Chris Dallas came up to me and he was like, I need you. And I think the reason that I'm part of this is because last year I helped with Celie Steffs with her research in sin and Isaiah 1 Whiskey, which I will hopefully be taking on this year. Uh, and I feel like that just gave me a voice and able to become part of Mega Powers. Awesome. Yeah, and you were super helpful last year, I think, with that. We can start working on Celie Steffs anytime, too, just so you know. Oh, yay. What else? Because I know that's not the only way people got in here. How else did you get involved? Just from due to a few things basically you were saying people want to join, so yeah. said yeah. yeah. Well, you, we invited you into the ELT, I think, earlier in the year. Yes, you did. You did. Um, and I had, it's the Mega Powers on Facebook, too, mm -hmm. that I, um, we're a part of, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Anybody else want to talk about why you agreed to be a part of this? Because, you know, as Isaiah mentioned earlier, it was kind of vague what we were going to be doing. And in some ways, it's still a little bit vague. So why did you agree? I think that's the most exciting part is that it's vague. It's not a specific, like, class that we have to do where we're, like, specifically told to do this, do that. Um, it's more of exciting and open time for us to do something better for our school and for our community. And that's just way more fun. <laughs> that creativity, that individuality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. What else? Liberty, why did you say yes? Um, I think because as one of the people who don't get along with a lot of people in the school, mm -hmm. like an outsider, um, I know what it feels like to not have a voice. And this, this ELT will give me a voice and hopefully other people a voice depending on what we're going to do. Right. So look for sharing stories, having a voice, talking about things, or... How else do any of you others feel like you want a voice? This might provide a platform for a voice. How do you see that happening? I feel like with it being like three separate grades, that it's going to be able to like allow us to come more together and be able to just make this school not just cliques, but allow it to become one whole community. Mm -hmm. It, it allows a bunch of leaders who I feel like the Mega Powers is just a bunch of leaders to come together and work together to make GC Everest a really okay. positive community. So in the three grades, you mean sophomore, junior, senior? Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Anybody else? How you envision a voice? Because I think that's an important part of it, you know, trying to pull in diverse ages and cl uh, across cliques, as you say. Um, so it seems like we just started kind of describing mega powers in the population, what the dynamic in the room is like. Anybody else want to kind of talk about that? What, what do you see as the dynamic and, and what's it been like just being in there so far? I mean, good, bad, otherwise, what you expected, didn't expect, any of those things. Um, you're kind of like forced to talk to people. Like it's not like the bad thing, mm -hmm. but uh, you and the other two teachers have been in dark. You guys really try to like push us to like do our family group time so we go and talk to people and we can talk about our week and so we're not just like bundling up all of our stuff that's been happening. Yeah. 
And then going off of what Isaiah said, he said about families and that, um, I feel like our class being in a whole is starting to become more of a family. And so if there was a way to take us out of like our like small families into a bigger family type community, I guess, mm-hmm. suppose. So because people listening to this podcast probably don't know what we mean by family, anybody want to kind of talk about that? Um, our families are pre-assigned groups by... Um, it's just a random setting with a few different people. I think in my group, there's like, um, yeah, there's guys, girls, seniors, sophomores, juniors, um, and yeah, that's basically it. Except for us. Yeah, there's. A, well, I think there's five or six in every family. Yeah. yeah. And then we meet. Well, now we meet twice a week. <laughs> yeah. Now we're going to be meeting twice a week, right? Mondays with quick check-ins. Fridays, or I guess in this case, this week, since we're going to school Friday, we'll meet Thursday for a little. And hopefully those are a little bit longer meetings. You know, it's tough in here. You know, as you're talking about CUE stuff, so you're talking about, you know, Harmony's talking about, um, you know, making this whatever we want to. We still have to find balance, you know, and I think we're still looking for that between balancing what we'd like to see Mega Powers do with what the responsibilities already are. And you have a ton. Um, so we are asking for time on Thursdays and Fridays for us to come together and have conversation, and maybe it'll last longer. Um, Knowing also that sometimes kids miss some days and they have to take that physics test on Friday or whatever, and we, we're going to try to play through that as best as possible. Um, do you think our school needs something like Mega Powers? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think it's just like what Caitlin said earlier, where it's just like a group of leaders, and like we can all kind of like get ideas off of each other. And uh, I really like like the community aspect and like. I've talked to so many more people than I ever have this year. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone knows me now. (laughs) And I think it's fun. I think um, that, you know, there's some people in the school who want to do something about how people treat each other. Mm -hmm. And this is a way for those people to be like, hey, I have something to say, or those people who want something to say but don't say anything because mm-hmm. they don't have anything like this to be able to say anything. So right. I think this is really helpful for those people who need it. Well, I think your perspective is particularly interesting, Leah, because you're coming from someplace else into this. You know, I mean, you were in McHenry last year near Chicago, mm-hmm. and now you're stepping into this school that you haven't been to this school before, right? No. Nope. Right. Mm-hmm. So so it's particularly interesting perspective being in that sense an outsider becoming an insider. Well, I think it's nice, and I also think that more people outside should come to the school because my personal experience has been not the greatest, but also good in the same area from the staff and the adults are, you know, very caring and um, helpful mm-hmm. in things, and I like to connect with adults as it is, Mm -hmm. so if I can with students too, that's a little bit more of a challenge because I am an outsider. Mm -hmm. So I'd want to be able to seem like, even though I'm not from here, I can still learn from people here, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I just wish there were more people in our ELP, like more people were able to, not more people, you know. Well, I know it's hard, hard. you got 60, but it would be really nice for there to be another 60, but... It's just when you think about it, there's so many people in the school and they were such a small part of that. And I don't know, I think, I know you can't change anybody, but um, it's, it's people's mindset. If people are willing to change, I think they will well, right. modify. And, and one of the fundamental questions, I guess, that I'm questioning and dealing with, um, and I know Hanson and Dubs and I talk about this and we talk with other people, but how do you grow? something like this, you know, because I don't think we've even accomplished what we want to yet in here. I mean, even in terms of the dynamic within the room, you know, we, we're beginning to talk to people, um, but there's still, not that groups are always wrong or bad, you know, I mean, obviously you can have friends and people that you hang out with and stuff, but I think we're still scratching the surface with um, digging deeper and recognizing similarities Anyways, how do you grow that then outside of an ELT? That's the question. Making more people aware that 
there's real issues that need to be talked about and actual change instead of talking about it and it's staying the same. You can talk about it and nothing ever changes. But if you talk about it and do the action of it, of what you're talking about, then the issue is gone, you know, if it's a positive thing. So action is really important. We can start talking. That's the first step. But some kind of action. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Any other ideas? Just to bring them together. Because if you're in your, like, separate groups throughout the school and, like, then you do take an action, maybe that action is just in one group and not in all groups. Mm -hmm. So if there's a way to mix both action and, like, the whole population mm -hmm. together to make sure everyone's doing that same action. So... See, I don't know about you, but when I look around the table here, too, I see people who are already engaged in actions, too, you know, which is part of the reason you were invited into the Metro Powers. I mean, I think, Isaiah, about the uh, video you made for us last year with Innovation Creation, and, like, to me, that is part of the leadership of trying to share with others, you know? I mean, you, you interviewed some people, and you met new people that way. You made a video voluntarily for us, you know, to, um, to help set, uh, sell our innovation class, you know, and to me, that's... Those are little th little steps that are important. You know, I mean, it's a lot of work for you. You know, and Caitlin, obviously, with the Sealy steps, and um, you know, I mean, that was a huge success last year, and, and you were super helpful. Um, and Harmony, you've been doing. I, I mean, you do a lot of stuff, but between the volunteering outside of school, and um, I just think about the fact that we just found like three hundred fifty dollars that you helped raise last year that we need to spend. Yeah, which, by the way, you guys um, come up with some ideas on how we can spend that because it's still not quite sure on that. So. Mm -hmm. Is that from like that scan app last mm -hmm. year? Yeah. Really? Yeah. We stopped doing that because we, we thought it wasn't working. Yeah. No, I we got like 350 ended up raising like $28 and then like that was just like half of it. And then I was like, well, this, this is, I don't think anyone's doing this. So then I deleted the app off my phone. So then Sale comes up to me and was like, yeah, we have $350. You, you need to spend this. And I was like, when? When did we get yeah. the money? Yeah. <laughs> So, but I mean, even then, you know, Leah, you're in here for a reason, uh, and part of it is being from outside coming in, and I think about the things that you've been doing just in our classroom and the conversations and the perspective you bring, which is fantastic. And Liberty, I think you have, you're a great leader in terms of trying to bridge these gaps that you were talking about, about, you know, cliques and about, you know, I'm not quite like everybody and I'm a part of a different group. Like, those are the things that I think everybody on around here is um, is already doing some of the work. I think recognizing that what we're doing kind of on that daily basis um, should mirror kind of what we're saying, you know? I think that's cool. Um, anything else you're hoping that comes out of Mega Powers this year? I mean, we've already touched on some of the, you know, bridging gaps and breaking down barriers and stuff, but anything else that you hope comes out of it? I hope that, uh, like, as an ELT, like, even if we split up and, like, just expand our horizons of, like, who we split up with, of course, but I think that just, like, doing little things around the community is always going to be beneficial. I think that we could try to expand this past the school mm -hmm. as well, like, uh, like, even if that's, like, just basic stuff, like, picking up, like, litter or something, like, mm -hmm. helping out that way, but just fundraising, just helping the community as a whole and allowing us to all become unified. Yeah, those things that can bring people together. And going off of what she said, one thing I'm like kind of hoping that maybe we can incorporate in this like class is like doing a huge community thing to like get everyone involved. Because like we talked about that driving movie thing or whatever. Right. And if we do more fundraising or on top of like the money that we already have, we could do something like that to bring your community aspect in. And then I was thinking about it when she was, um, Leah was talking about action. Mm -hmm. Because before you start moving, you could just stand up there, a whole ELT, you know, and you can talk to them. Be like, here, here's the thing. You're a community. Like, this isn't just a class. This isn't just an ELT. You're a community. You're a school. And, like, you know, that's just, like, one thing. Right. And, like, that, I, that sounds like fun. It does sound like fun. <laughs> yeah. I'd also like to see, like, a lot more um, school involvement with, like, our class. Because, like, we don't really do anything with the school. Like, really like, like, like it'd be cool like if like we got to like participate in like some of the I can't think of what it's called the assemblies or stuff mm -hmm. like that or like like go like plant a garden out back or something or like go help the school in somehow. And I hope 
that we have time for this. I know I led some brainstorming sessions earlier too, like right in the first week or two of school about things we could do. And I hope that those ideas are still out there and I hope that they begin to get um, some traction within our students. For me, like, there's no, I love to help, but there's only so much I can lead. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm really hoping that I get some people who step up and say, Hey, I want to do this. How do we go about doing this? And you know, and then I can say, "What do you need from me? How can I help? Go do it." <laughs> you know, um, that's something I I hope for too. And I'm excited. I'm because I, I see us making steps all the time towards these things. But it takes a while sometimes. You know, just to organize 60 people and time and like you said, balancing responsibilities it's, it doesn't happen overnight. Any parting thoughts? For our crew out there listening, I'm excited, and you should be excited for what the future holds, man. <laughs> Join us on our mission. Join us on our mission. Join us next week. <laughs> yeah. Next week. Mega Power signing <laughs> off. <laughs>